I think, yeah, with everything that's been going on in the world, I think that's a lot of, um, you know, new resistant uh, bacteria going around. I think I had a really interesting conversation recently with my chiropractor and he believed that uh, it's uh, the overuse of hand sanitizers is actually mm. really uh, damaging the microbiome of, of of the planet. Actually, not just us, wow. but the planet. And and what we're what we're doing is we're just creating highly resistant strains of bacteria. Uh, so it's producing all these you know new adjusted forms of cold and flu that we've never seen before. Uh, and that's why none of us have any resistance or immunity to these new strains. Um, which makes a lot of sense to me, you know, because, uh, you know, a, a strong immune system is a diverse microbiome and mm. that's that's our first line, right? So if we're just hand sanitising and sterilising everything and there's no diversity uh, that we're experiencing anymore, everything's so sterile. Mm. Uh, and I really worry about, you know, to especially like infants and toddler age children now what's it going to do long term for them because they're living in this sterile environment that's been you know really highly sanitized and and where's all their diversity going to mm -hmm. come from it's um yeah going to have some pretty weird stuff come up in the next generation I think yeah lots of information for, sure. for me my asthma started uh as an infant actually I had a very severe Vax reaction to the MMR shot mm -hmm. um, and that afternoon my my mum discovered me blue in my cot um, and I was rushed to emergency uh, and I you know it, it was a pretty standard reaction I had um, some big seizures and very very high temperatures uh, and then after that my asthma seemed to develop from that point um, and it was very, very severe. I remember as a kid being told that if I didn't take my my asthma meds that I would die, um, which was pretty frightening for, you know, a six, seven-year-old to hear. Uh, and so all I had to do was look in my school bag and see that my ventilator puffer wasn't in there and I would start going, <gasps> you know, it was just, it was, there was a lot. Uh, I realised, you know, in my 20s, in my early 20s, that it was, there's also a lot of emotional healing that needed to be done around, you know, breathing is, is, uh, there's such a panic feeling that comes with not being able to breathe, breathe fully. Um, you know, so I actually met Mark when I was 13. <laughs> he was my first, first boyfriend. <laughs> and at the time, um, he was really interested in health and he had just, uh, he just enrolled to study naturopathy. Uh, and he knew about my asthma and he was really interested in trying to help me with it. And, um, and then he, so this was down in Canberra, and then he moved to Queensland to study naturopathy. And uh, we didn't see each other for 10 years. Um, and in that time, yeah, my, my asthma stayed absolutely shocking until, uh, right up until I met Mark, really. I re-met Mark when I was 23, so 10 years went by. Um, but by that stage, I'd, I'd travelled the world a bit and I woke up one morning in Edinburgh and went, I'm going to be a naturopath, just like Mark was. And I enrolled at SEU in Lismore and then flew home. And I, yeah, that first semester of naturopathy at Lismore Uni was just mind blowing because I realised that uh, my asthma was so food and gut related and nobody had ever associated any of what I was eating with my lungs. You know, my mum would constantly ask, what can I do? Is there anything else I can do? You know, I was steroid dependent for, you know, on and off for, for 20 years. Um, and, you know, it, it got to the point where I knew the children's ward at Canberra Hospital so well, you know, I knew all the nurses' names and, and it was it was just horrible to, um, you know, to be away from my family for, for weeks on end. Um, and my mum actually, each time I spent more than two weeks in the children's ward, my mum would buy me one of these dolls, they've called a, a My Child doll, and uh, recently when I cleaned out my my mum's garage we found a box and, and I think there was 14 of these dolls in mm -hmm. there uh, so it was just you know it was a really big part of my childhood uh, to be uh, hospitalized and not not being able to breathe well and being left out of things like 
you know, the, the sports carnival at school because I couldn't handle it and, you know, those sorts of things. Um, but we did a lot of things like I, I was a swimmer uh, to try and, you know, help my lungs. I played woodwind instrument and played the clarinet and the saxophone. And, and this was all supposed to help me with my asthma, but nothing, nothing got on top of my inflammation. Uh, and it wasn't until I got to Lismore Uni and I realised that all my favourite foods were laden with sulfites, MSG, nitrates. Um, it, it was as if I was, I was actually ambushing or, or sabotaging my own health. Um, it was hard not to think of it like that because, um, yeah, you know, I was reading that that list of you know the top ten food additives that the asthmatics react to, and it was all just everything that I loved. <laughs> um, you know, and I. I realised that as soon as I needed to make that big change in my diet and start really focusing on, you know, reading my ingredients labels and and even just making everything from scratch myself, um, everything changed really dramatically for me at that point. And that was when Mark came on the scene when I just started that journey, uh, reconnected with Mark. And one of the first things he asked me was, how's your asthma? What's going on with your asthma? And I was like, yeah, it's, it's terrible, but, it, you know, I'm, I'm working on it. And, uh, and he was the one that was like, okay, like, let's talk about your poos. And, and you know, I was like, oh, God, I've just met this guy, you know, and, um, and I realised that, you know, the IBS that I'd suffered for years beforehand was all related as well. Um, you know, and even in, I studied traditional Chinese medicine before I did naturopathy and the lungs and the large intestine are the yin yang partners. And, you know, what's happening in your lungs, it always shows up in your digestive system and vice versa. And um, I really began to learn that, um, you know, I had this belief that my body didn't work. It was, it was a bit broken or dysfunctional in some way. Um, and I think, you know, a really big part of my healing was learning that my body was having an appropriate response to things that I was actually allergic to. So if I came in contact with a lot of dust or a lot of pollen um, or cats for me was a big one or mould, um, my airways would shut down to save my life uh, because it was poisonous to me. And having that realisation of knowing that actually my body is protecting me, not, not trying, trying to attack me. And, and it just gave me a new way of looking at, you know, the wisdom of the body and how it's a self-healing mechanism and how all we have to do is support it, not, not try and work against it. So uh, when Mark, you know, one of the first things he had me do was a very, very serious three-week uh, bowel cleanse, uh, which was clonic irrigation and enemas and juice fasting and taking a lot of motion potion um, and a lot of herbs to really, really clean out everything you know uh you know being steroid being on steroids for 20 years it was you know a huge toxic load for my body um and i i'd always suffered from psoriasis you know there was always you know some in the back of my hair or behind my knees or somewhere in my body there would be at least one patch um so it was like my my inflammation in my body never had an opportunity to to come down uh and as soon as i did that first juice fast um I stopped using my Ventolin. I didn't need it anymore. Um, and then and then I did a beautiful uh, breathing course called Buteco Breathing. And I'm uh, not sure if you know about it, but it's you tape your mouth closed at night time. And I always thought, oh, it's dangerous. I'm, I'm not going to be able to breathe. But um, it, it was amazing how, you know, realising that it wasn't that I wasn't, I, I was getting enough oxygen. I always thought that I wasn't getting enough oxygen, but I actually wasn't. Uh, getting my CO2 high enough. So I was constantly in this state where I was <sighs> just breathing in way too much and, and always at the very, very top of my lungs. And uh, Buteko teaches you to breathe out fully and for you to have that pause between breaths and everything just slowed right down. It was just an absolutely beautiful process to go through, which, which actually made me a lot mentally calmer as well. Um, and so I say, I say, you know, Mark sorted out my gut health, which, you know, was absolutely the case, but it was a process of a few things as well. 
Um, and it was probably a, an intense journey of about three months of doing a lot of work. And in that, in that time, I eliminated every, um, every food that I was suspicious that I might have an inflammatory response to. And there was a lot, you know. Um, if you look at <clears throat> one of the things, when I, when I had my children, we, we introduced solid food according to the teeth. Have you ever looked at the, yeah, so the front four teeth for babies is soft fruits and vegetables. Um, and you don't introduce any animal products until they get their canine teeth, their eye teeth, and then no grains at all until they've got at least a molar. Um, and, you know, to me, hearing that for the first time was like, of course, that's correct. That's absolutely the way that we should be introducing food. But we we do it the exact opposite way. The first thing that we introduce to babies is like a rice porridge or, you know, a, a grain of some description, um, usually mixed with cow's milk or something of the sort, you know, how inflammatory could that be for, you know, these brand new guts? Um, and it just made me really focus on, okay, what's most digestible for me? So let's start with the really, really easy stuff. So completely raw food, plant-based diet for quite a while. And then very, very slowly reintroducing, uh, you know, eggs, a, a bit of hard cheese, nuts and seeds and, and those sorts of things. And then very, very last, uh, fermented grain. And, and that was how Mark and I got um, really interested in fermentation and sourdough bread making and you know raw dairy and and that was when the birth of our workshops when we started teaching uh you know fermented food workshops and sourdough bread making workshops uh and at the time we actually lived down the road from a raw dairy in beachmont in, on the gold coast and so we had access to this amazing raw milk that was just incredible and you could you know just behind the shed you could look out and see the cows and and they were just the happiest you know, frolicking cows that you can imagine. And uh, I realised that when you're, when you're reintroducing foods in their really natural state, you know, not processed as they are, you know, not highly treated milk and milk products and, and you know, grain as it's supposed to be fermented, then it's no longer an inflammatory food at all. It's, it's our natural diet. And, you know, from that point, it's been... Um, yeah, never needed another asthma drug ever again, uh, which was just mind boggling for me. And I thought I would be dependent for my whole life. Uh, so that's amazing. And I still do have a, an allergic response to mold. I've, I've noticed I unloaded a bunch of mulch that I could see all the mold through it. Uh, and I got wheezy from it. But, uh, but now I know I can do my breathing techniques and I don't need to you know, quickly rush out and grab the drugs to get on top of it anymore. My body knows how to cope. Uh, so my so my inflammatory response is at a really, really healthy state. It's still acknowledging that, that something is a poison, but it's not, you know, raging out of control at the slightest exposure. So, and now I eat what I want. I mean, I've got a great diet, but I can splurge out and, you know, eat a pastry or, you know, have some you know, cow's milk from a cafe and, you know, and not not worry about what sort of brand of milk it is or anything like that. And I, I, I get away with it now. My body, my body allows it, um, which I, you know, that was, there was a point in my life when I thought that I'm never going to be able to eat anything but brown rice and, and avocado, you know, like it was becoming very, very limited to what I could and couldn't eat, uh, so there is there is an end to the journey, like you know, um, and, and the funny thing is, it's it's the same treatment for any disease. Like, it, and that's the the beautiful part about naturopathic philosophy is, um, you know, no matter what is going on with people, it doesn't matter what the symptoms are or or what disease label they have, the treatment is always the same. Are you eliminating your toxic waste? efficiently and are you absorbing your nutrients and if not nothing works nothing can work from that state so fix those two main functions of the body and everything else falls away it's amazing so yeah it became it really became my passion to to see how 
how you can really change people's lives yeah. with that information. Yeah. Amazing. I can relate to your story so much because I myself was a severe allergic uh, sufferer as well. I had a severe allergic rhinitis. rhinitis? Yes. <sighs> Even when I started studying naturopathy, I had to bring a box full of tissue with me because wow. my throat kept ru running. And I didn't know why or how when I started studying naturopathy, because I've been going to a um, uh, specialist for years since I was like four or five years old, I always seem to be medicated. And I thought I've never, I that's the condition I have to live with for the rest of my life. Um, yeah. But, uh, yes, for me, the same, the food I crave the most, that's mm. the food that it was causing me allergic reaction and also inflammation. I love yeah. to dairy products i loved my pasta and bread although yeah. i'm you know a japanese and um mm -hmm. i think uh, my nutritional uh, nutrition teacher uh, lecturer in southern cross university has taught me to get back onto traditional japanese diet excluding wheat mm -hmm. and dairy um it's so much yeah. better for you and I changed my diet completely back then. And then uh, within about six months or so, my allergy was gone. And same with you. Amazing. Yes, I can yes. eat a little bit of, uh, not too much uh, of cheese. And I can still enjoy dairy products. Not so mm. much because like, you know, being Asian, like I'm, uh, I have dairy intolerance. But um, mm -hmm. yes, I can eat most of the food without causing me runny nose or Sneeze yeah anything like that which is quite amazing <laughs> it's incredible isn't it yes and you know and I really realized that you know your body talks to you your body tells you exactly what you can't have yes. uh but I think after you know when you've had a really severe inflammatory condition for a long time your body stops talking to you it just it just sort of it's just in this you know heightened state all the time so it's difficult to you know, oh, what did I eat this morning? I'm feeling a little bit nasally or something like that. But your body definitely lets you know when you've done something, you know, a little bit too naughty. Yes. Um, and I still do get that response. Um, but, yeah, nothing like it was. And I remember reading to my mum, have you ever read uh, Sue Dengate's book? Um, she wrote Fed Up With Children's Behaviour and Fed Up With Asthma. They're, they're both amazing books fantastic um and there's a list in there about the top 10 most uh allergenic food for asthma sufferers and I read them to my mom and she burst into tears because uh these were foods that I was requesting in hospital that she would bring into me whilst I was in hospital and I we just had no idea you know what my favorite I'm just well I mean mostly it's things like anything that has MSG in it my favorite thing to eat in hospital was burger rings those chips mm -hmm. um and if you look at those ingredients you know MSG sulfites nitrates colors it, you know it was just laden with Triggers. all the things it was just chemical it, there's not a lot of food in that I, I would probably say not much at all um you know just chemicals and back in the day uh, there was so little regulation on the on the chemicals that we put in our food. You know, as a food product owner, there has never been anybody that has looked into our ingredients. And, and it's really frustrating for me because we really pride ourselves on where we source our ingredients and, you know, the fact that we would only ever put the highest quality ingredients into our products and, and that, you know, there's nothing to distinguish us from other other brands that you know might not be so um careful about where they source their ingredients or or the quality of their ingredients so it can be really frustrating on that level and you know you would think that Australian food laws the label laws would be quite high but they're actually quite terrible it's it's almost like a complaint basis if a if a competitor's product uh, or if a competitive brand, you know, if you step on their toes, then they might report you and you might get looked at. But only if there's like a complaint put against you for some reason. And, and that may just be that your product is taking up 
their old shelf space or something, you know, like it, it's, it's quite um, disappointing mm. that, we're, that we haven't done better than that yet. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, interesting. Um, I did some, <clears throat> you have talked about eliminating all the possible allergenic foods or inflammatory causing foods from your diet for a little while. I find mm. that the elimination process is very important as well. Um, yeah. because I've done that for like three, six months of no wheat, no dairy, mm. no alcohol, no caffeine, basically mm -hmm. eliminating all my favorite foods and drinks <laughs> from my diet. That was quite <laughs> terrible. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, it, it's the process that you have to go through, I think, initially. Mm. What do you think? I think that it's not possible to do it without the elimination because even, even if you're having a very small amount of, you know, so your main, your main, if we're talking about a clean diet, forgetting about all your food additives, if forgetting about all the food chemicals that you could possibly be reacting to, your major inflammatory foods are wheat because we've screwed that up major. So wheat, uh, dairy, we've also <laughs> managed to ruin that. Um, egg is a, is a really high one, uh, you know, and uh, things like uh, nuts, seeds, peanuts, that sort of range of foods. Um, and then you've got your uh, deadly nightshade vegetables are usually quite high on there as well. So tomatoes, eggplants, things like that. Um, and I think it's so important to just completely eliminate those uh, food sources for a period uh, because even if you're mildly intolerant to one of those, it's not actually an allergy, it's just a sensitivity, it's still going to spark that inflammatory response. Uh, and the idea is you give your body a, a period where nothing that you have is going to cause inflammation. You're just letting your immune system completely normalise and come down to a really good baseline and then work from there. And if when you get to that point where it's like a clean slate, no inflammation for a month, immediately when you have one of those, you know, uh, food sources that you are intolerant to, you know about it straight away. You go, okay, I can't have eggs for a time. I can't have gluten or, you know, so it becomes really, really clear. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that the allergy and intolerance testing that they do is not uh, completely, uh, you know, it can't be uh, done extremely well because uh, when they test people for gluten, what source of gluten are they using in that test? Is it from, you know, tip top Wonder White bread that's been highly sprayed, highly processed, unfermented, got bleach in it, you know, all, all those things. Is that the source of gluten that they're using to test you? Because everybody is going to test positive for that everyone it's an inflammatory food it's actually in my opinion no longer a food uh but you know if they used organically grown whole grain you know unsprayed stone ground flour and and sourced their gluten from that would it be a different story would we you know would we go oh actually my body can handle that but maybe if it was fermented it would be even more digestible um so I think we actually have to do the elimination ourselves rather than go out and get the testing done, which, you know, often costs a fortune anyway and doesn't give us a complete picture of where we're actually sitting uh, with what, we, what we'll respond to. So get to that beautiful space of no inflammation in the body and very, very slowly reintroduce foods and do, you know, a week for introducing egg, a week for introducing dairy a week for introducing grains and seeds and so that it's very very obvious uh you don't go out and have all these foods and then go oh you know my body just you know the idea is find out exactly what you shouldn't have and stay off those things for a good six months while you do the repair work and the repair is you know making sure that your your bowels are moving to, you know up to two to three times a day really really good stool consistency um, really high fiber diet, mainly plant-based raw food if you can. Um, and I'm a big bone broth um, advocate as well. I think that organic bone broth is 
magical for healing that and and doing all the repair work for the mucosa that's been really highly damaged where it's so thin that you get the leaky gut issues and stuff as well I think it's amazing for healing that up um and then once you've done the repair you know you should be able to have small amounts of those foods that you were initially responding to and hopefully not have a response um especially if you're using you know that the higher quality more you know organic digestible version of those of those food sources yeah but it is it's a big journey you know and but it's so worth it it's so worth doing the work um and coming out the other side of it it's life-changing Mm. Like three, six months out of my life of not having those uh, reactive foods, and I have no allergic reaction yeah. to anything for 20 years. So it's definitely worth it. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? Yeah. 